Hey everyone, it's Pink Apple, and as of tonight, we are currently holding the number one spot on both PCNA as well as PCEU. Today, I'll be sharing my thoughts on all of the cards within the Onsite Hunting deck, letting you know what cards I prioritize picking up and why. We're starting out our S tier today with an amazingly powerful card in Conquest. Conquest provides immense levels of power generation for its cost, while also having the flexibility of two options on play. If we go with the power option, comboing with just one card is going to get us as much power as playing the armory. In between agents, contract actions, and your green starter card, combos come relatively easy for the Ansei deck. The alternative option to acquire any card up to 4 can also be quite appealing, especially in the early game. This can enable you to start picking up multiple cards per turn as early as turn 3. And sometimes you can grab some amazing cards like Toll of Flesh or even another Conquest. With both these options being as powerful as they are, the card really lets you decide whether you want to be focusing on rushing the 40 prestige or improving the quality of your deck. These factors in mind, Conquest is one of the best turn 1 pickups you can have in the game and easily flexes into a multitude of game plans. As for the non-upgraded variant, Warrior Wave is the same card but loses the 2 power on the combo. This definitely takes the card down a notch as it doesn't quite have the ridiculous levels of power generation that Conquest provides for a 4 cost card. That being said, Warrior Wave still maintains the early game flexibility that Conquest has and serves as a solid way to proc your green combos. So we're not dropping down too far here, and it'll slot towards the bottom of A tier. Now moving on to our next S tier card, we have Hero's End. In a similar fashion to Conquest, Hero's End offers a choice between high power generation and utility, with both of these options being incredibly potent. If you go the power route and manage to land the combo, you're getting a massive 7 power. Add in the Halalu Sacrifice, and you're getting 13 prestige with just one play of Hero's End. While the utility option on the other hand lets you put 3 cards from your cooldown pile on top of your deck. This can definitely outperform the power choice in the right situations. If you already have a strong deck in the late game, this effect can easily make your next turn the final turn. You can force Crow combos, Halalu combos, or even just put all of your high power cards on top of your deck. Overall, Hero's End is a very powerful card that plays great with any deck and any playstyle. The upgrade dynamic here is nearly identical to Warrior Wave and Conquest. March and Hatu loses out on the 3 power combo, but retains the flexibility that Hero's End has and plays well with your Conquest and other combo cards. The card slots itself pretty comfortably towards the top of A tier, but lacks that immense power potential that makes Hero's End an S tier card. Next up, for our final card in the S tier, we actually have a contract action in Grand Oratory. As always, we'll be rating the contract actions according to the best case scenarios, since if the card is a bad pickup in your given turn, you can just opt not to buy it. That in mind, when Grand Oratory is good, it does incredible amounts of work for its price. You can use the 2 power it gives to activate the Onsei Patron power, or to draw a card with the Red Eagle Patron power. You also have a utility option, and most importantly, the Grand Oratory serves as a great combo starter for the other two S tier cards. All of this, and the card only costs 1 gold if you play just one other green card during your turn. The amount of value that you're getting here for just 1 gold cost is insane, and easily earns Grand Oratory a spot in the S tier. The base version of the card, Battle Meditation, loses the 2 gold on combo, which means we're paying 3 times as much for the same effects. This brings the card down to about the bottom of B tier in my opinion, and turns it into a sometimes decent card, but far from the great value that Grand Oratory was bringing. Moving on to the best card in our A tier today, we have our first agent, the Hellshearer Herald. 
This card is similar to the Dreaming Cave in that it's not a great pickup in the first few turns typically, but if you already have a few powerful cards, this agent becomes an absolute powerhouse. Being able to move two cards to the top of your deck every turn is immensely powerful, and lets you consistently play your strong combos with no reliance on RNG. Add in the fact that you can combo all of the exterior cards off of the agent itself, and the Helshira Herald can get out of control real fast. The only downside of the card being you really need to have two or three strong cards besides the Herald for it to get going. But once you have that set up, your opponent essentially has to kill the card every time it's played. Next up, we have Shihai Summoning, which is another card with some absolutely great flexibility. The ability to acquire a 5 cost card is going to vary a lot in strength depending on what other decks are in your game, as there's no 5 cost cards in the Anse deck itself. That being said, there are some great 5 cost cards in this game, such as Grand Lyceny, the Armory, or even some of the Red Eagle contract agents. But the great part about Shihai Summoning that separates it from something like Custom Seizure is that if there's no amazing acquire options, you can opt to instead refresh two cards to the top of your deck and set up a great next turn. If you manage to proc the combo, you can even use Shihai Summoning to acquire a card and then the same turn you bought it, put that card on top of your deck. This is an overall really solid card, and most of the times, one of the two options is going to be giving you some pretty good value. Moving down to the B tier, we have Ansei's Victory, as well as its base version, Ansei Assault. Now off the bat, I want to say that these two cards become high A tier, or possibly even S tier cards, if you also happen to have the Hoawu deck in your match. When you add the ability to sacrifice it, Ansei's Victory turns into a massive 14 prestige card, and if it's a slow match, you can acquire other expensive cards to also sacrifice. That being said, without the sacrifice option from Hawaii, these cards are really slow. 6 power is pretty comparable to what we're getting with Conquest and Hero's End, except we're paying a massive 9 gold here compared to 4 or 6. The price point is simply a bit too high for what we're getting here, especially compared to some other expensive cards like Rally or Currency Exchange, which have more impact at a lower price tag. And much like the Hawawu Kinsman, by the time you're actually playing these 9 cost cards, acquiring cards is often too slow. They're decently powerful and consistent cards, but the price tag really keeps them any higher than B tier unless you have the option to sacrifice them. The non-upgraded version of the card loses out on 1 power and can only acquire cards up to 9 cost instead of 10. There are only two cards in the entire game with a 10 gold cost, so this is not the biggest deal unless those happen to be in your tavern. The card's definitely a bit weaker, but not too far behind Ansei's victory. Now moving on to the final card in our tier list today, we have No Shira Poet. This is the base version of Hell Shira Herald, and only allows you to move one card to the top of your deck rather than two. This is a meaningful distinction in my opinion, as it means you can't force combos nearly as well with the Poet. By no means is the Poet a bad card, and moving a card like Hero's End or Ansei's Victory to the top of your deck can still have a lot of value, but we have so many options in the Ansei Hunting deck when it comes to this effect, and the Poet just ends up being the least attractive card in the deck in my eyes. Once again though, the card probably moves up one tier if you have the option to sacrifice him after use. And that about wraps it up for the Ansei Hunden card rankings. This deck has some really powerful cards, and as a whole is super consistent, with most of the cards landing in the S and A tiers. I see most of my success with the Ansei deck when I pair it alongside either the Duke of Crows or Grandmaster Hawawu decks. But the cards are so flexible, you can really play it alongside anything. If you found this insight helpful, be sure to give the video a like, and subscribe to keep up to date with the 3 remaining tier list videos coming out soon.
Next up, we'll be looking at the Red Eagle deck, which has been my personal favorite as of late. Until next time, and may the Divines bless your taverns with turn one conquest.